Um, my head's spinning and ready for vacation. We've got one launch closing the shopping cart tonight at midnight. We've got another closing the shopping cart next Tuesday. It's, uh, you know, two communities opening all the systems, all the processes, all the check marks checked. It's getting so close and my brain is ready for a nap. <laughs> um, I guess the, the thing that I was thinking about and reflecting on earlier this morning was just how around uh, being an entrepreneur is kind of like getting a, a university degree in creation, you know, how to take our ideas from a simple idea to something that can generate us revenue and provide a service to others in an ongoing basis. And how a lot of people, and I've seen it over the years, people join the community uh, expecting to launch a course in a few weeks because that's what's advertised all over the internet and expecting that that course is going to replace their income and that they'll be able to quit their job and become this, this tycoon entrepreneur and be written about in Time Magazine as Entrepreneur of the Year and that that is just not what happens. Usually what happens is they struggle and struggle and struggle and either they quit or they persevere and they launch their first course and their first course is maybe mediocre, but then they learn a whole bunch by launching the first course and then they launch another course and the next course is just above mediocre and maybe they make just enough money to cover the expense of making the course. Maybe they make a little bit of profit on the course, but they're still not ready to quit their job and then they make another course. And again, it improves a little bit because each time they make something, it gets a little bit better. They dial it in, it gets a little bit easier to make the thing. But the thing is, is most people I see that come through the doors here is either they just never get that first course launched or that first paid coaching experience or that first program. They never actually pull the trigger, start trying to make sales, and then actually go through the full process of, of teaching it or creating it. And I think that's the biggest problem that I see is we have to be willing to launch a shitty course before we can launch a great one. And when I look back at like the first courses that I launched in the meditation space, they were terrible. The sound quality was absolutely awful. It was stuff I was not proud of, but people still paid me money. They still liked what I had to offer. And that was because I did my very best effort. The, the content itself was good. I was teaching the expertise I was qualified to teach. It was just the production quality was pretty awful. And I didn't know how to do the tech. I didn't know how to do the automations. It was all manual. It was a big pain in the butt. But then after that first one, I was like, man, I need this to be automated. So I learned how to do automation in the second time I launched the course. The third time I launched the course, I'm like, man, these audio qualities, they sound grainy. I sound like I'm in a tin can. I need to improve the audio quality. And so the next course I launched was the, I focused on the audio quality and just slowly over time, over years, I would improve these, like every time I launched something, it was like, I just made it a little bit better until, you know, 16 years pass and here I am. And it's like, I'm now ready to pass the baton to all of you out there who are watching and listening. And that's what this is, is like, this is a university degree. I look at my, my journey as an entrepreneur. I dropped out of college in 2005 to become an entrepreneur. And I've been doing that ever since. And so my, you know, I'm a slow learner. So that's why it's taken me 16 years to get to where I am. Uh, I'm also stubborn, so I don't know when to give up on an idea. And so I always push through on that idea until I've seen it executed, no matter how successful or unsuccessful it is. I just, I compulsively need to get the idea out of my head and into the world so I can move on to the next thing. And so I feel like, you know, for anybody, no matter where we are on the journey, patience is going to be our best friend. It's going to support us to persevere long enough to actually get to the point of being successful. And if I was to look back and give my 21 year old self some advice that I wish I would have listened to with, with people in my life back when I dropped out of college, um, it's that I would have found some form of part-time work that could have at least covered my bills so that I could have done my entrepreneurial work 
with like my full heart and not coming from a place of survival because creating from a space of survival, uh, I feel like it interferes with the purity of the expression of what we're trying to put out in the world. And so I wish I would have been wise enough back then to have to found some form of part-time work that would have helped me to develop creative skills as a creator, whether it was graphic design or video production or something that if, if I would have had the foresight back then to have invested in the skills I needed to become the entrepreneur I wanted to be, I think it would have made my life a lot easier. I'd probably have less gray hairs and a little bit less of a receding hairline because honestly, creating from survival is the most stressful thing we can do. And I feel like it also comes across in marketing emails when we're marketing out of desperation for income to be able to pay our rent and to buy food. It's a different energy than feeling secure in ourselves, feeling secure in what we have, and obviously sometimes life is very difficult and we have no choice but to push the gas pedal as hard as we possibly can, take a risk and put something out into the world. And I can't tell you how many times I saved my own ass on rent day by launching a new program just because I had to. And like the number of times that that happened, that I made just enough money to cover the next rent check, or I made just enough money to get through the week with enough food, all because it was like, well, here we are again, just where I was last time I did this. It's time to launch another thing because there's no other choice. And for me, being a Taurus whose last name is Morris, I'm extra stubborn. And so there was just absolutely no possible way uh, I was going to allow myself to go get a job back then. And like my stubborn nature just forced me to perse persevere. And so I think it's just, you know, for people coming in, uh, whether new or old, if we take a step back and we release our attachments to having the next thing be the big thing that we've been imagining and instead treat this like a never ending journey that is our university degree and how to be an awesome entrepreneur and creator. And we just strive for the next thing we create to be better than the last thing we made. And then the next thing after that to be a little bit better. I mean, if that's our main intention, as we create is just to like always be improving and leveling up the bar from what we did last time. I, I think we're going to get to where we want to go. It may not take six weeks to become a millionaire and it may not take six months. It may take six years. Or for me, you know, I feel like 16 years in, I'm starting to get the hang of it. <laughs> you know, I hired 12 people in the last week and it's gone pretty smooth so far. And it's just like, because of built upon the experience over the years, I feel more confident and at ease with the decisions I have to make tomorrow, today and tomorrow because of all the decisions I made in the past. And so again, it comes back to the ABCs of always be creating. So we're always improving and we're always putting something better out into the world. And if we can release our attachments to the outcome of this next thing needing to be the big thing, and we can just accept this next thing's just the next thing. And then there's going to be a thing after that thing. It takes the pressure off for us to have to have that masterpiece of perfection. Instead, we're just going to do our best work. That best work is going to serve the people that need it right now. And even if nobody signs up, at least we did the thing. We followed through on a vision that we had and we can always refine, improve, and, and get better at listening to our intuition. Cause I think that's, you know, it's one of the most important things is just like tapping into our intuition to be able to guide us to whatever the next thing is that we need to be doing with our life and with our, our careers and our businesses. And so, yeah, that was, that was my reflection on the golf course this morning. I was walking, I'm just like, holy shit, entrepreneurship is crazy. It's so Hard. I mean, talk about a journey of self-discovery or self-mastery, you know, like I, I feel like in some regards, when our hearts are in the right places and we're focused on a vision that matters for other people and not just our own personal gain, there's 
it's an ultimate spiritual conquest. It's like, you know, who we have to become in order to do what we're trying to do. Um, they're one and the same, you know, we have to become the person who is able to serve the number of people that we're intending to serve through our work. We have to become the entrepreneur who is willing to get our hands dirty, to go through the hair pulling experience of learning new technology and new systems. We have to have the foresight to understand what systems we even need, or we have to have the humility to ask others who understand what is needed to get their advice and their perspective and to be humble enough to take that advice and to apply it or to take the feedback from people who are dissatisfied with their experience and, and take that and apply it to the thing that we're going to make next. So it's just a crazy ride. And I just want to remind you all that to be gentle and remember that, you know, you're going to be an entrepreneur the rest of your life is my guess. If you're here, you're an entrepreneur in your spirit which means, you know, this is a very long journey ahead of you. So pace yourself. And I think it's really important to wake up and do work that really lights you up and gets you excited. And if, you know, you're doing work that you're not super stoked about and you think you do it because you have to do it because you have this set of skills or this set of experience, then I would say like question that and really question it. Because if you're going to be an entrepreneur for the next 10, 20 years, and maybe this is, you know, everything you did up to here was just preparing you for what you actually really want to be doing. Like for me with Magic Kids, that was not a planned step this year. That was not on my goals of things to launch on January 1st of this year. But now it's taking over so much of what I'm putting my focus and our resources and money into. And that was just a surprise. And I can see how like, you know, hiring 12 people in the last week or so is like everything I've done was preparing me for what we're going to do with Magic Kids. And where Magic Kids is going to go, I have no idea. But I know Magic Kids is just going to prepare me for whatever follows Magic Kids. And so, you know, for all of us, everything that we've done leading up to here is preparing us for this, which is actually preparing us for something else that we can't even imagine right now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really amazing just to, you know, if we all just take a moment to reflect on where we are now and all of the choices that we've made to get us here, all the work experience, whether it's jobs, whether it's failed attempts at trying to launch something or write something or create something, whether it's, you know, participating in a joint venture with other people, like all of those, all of those things that at the time of creating them, the creative energy that was flowing through us felt like this is it. I know for me, like I've had the, this is it, so many times that I'm definitely less naive to think that any of the things that I do are going to be it, whatever it is, you know, the big it with a capital I and a capital T. And, you know, rarely is it ever as big as what my imagination wants to blow it up to be. And I've come to realize that that's, that's just totally fine. You know, as long as uh, we're putting our best effort force forth, creating the next, the next thing is such an important, important step that we really have to create the next thing in order to get to the place that we're trying to go to as as creators wherever that is uh, by not creating the thing i mean i know for me it it like it pecks at me right now i've got a kid's story that i'm working on that is like tapping me on the shoulder and just hold on i'm like busy in launch mode but all i want to do is go sit at the keyboard and work on this kid's story and so you know the the creative energy when we give the spirit of our creations our attention and our focus and our care i mean they just they're relentless they're gonna keep asking us for their attention and so it's important to to cultivate that relationship with our creations so that we can bring them forward in a good way because there i mean i remember with the grady course adventure when we were creating that like the spirit of that course and what we did with that was so strong like it fed us for nine months to work 16 plus hours a day you know with hardly making any money like the the creative life force of that project was so massive and monumental in my life like it it really propelled things forward on the trajectory that we've been on for years and you know to find a to find a thing and I'm, I'm getting that same sort of 
feeding energy that I'm being fed so much by what we're doing with magic kids that it's very similar with as the great e-course adventure is just I'm a lot more balanced in where I am in my life right now than where I was six years ago when we were doing that. Um, and so that feels, it feels more harmonious with lifestyle and with my values and what I'm trying to do and with my health and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, it, it just finding a project that is that big of a yes, I feel like is really important that we're not just creating something because we should be. If we have the luxury and the privilege and the gift of having space in our lives to actually take a step back and think about what do I really want to do with my gifts in my life? And if we can allow for an answer to emerge that feels really good. And one of the best ways to allow for those answers to emerge is through conversations with other people, conversations with mentors, with friends, asking people to hold space for you to just talk about what you think you should do. And if it's with clients that you've worked with and just like the, the creative process of just brainstorming what it is that you want to do is th so therapeutic for the creative spirit because sitting in your room with white walls all around, trying to think up your great idea and master plan is just not the way to go. You know, we need a shift in perspective in order to have the, the epiphanies and the realizations on what we're really here to do. And whether it's going on a road trip, which I'm doing my first solo camping trip in years this weekend for three days. And I know the shift in perspective of just getting away from my laptop, getting away from my family and my friends and my routines and just going away by myself is, is going to offer me so much perspective on just everything in life that's happening. So, you know, when we did the Grady course adventure, our, way of creating the curriculum for that and all of the ideas we had was out in nature. We did six, seven hour hikes every single day. We wrote all of the, the ideas, the curriculum, the outlines, the characters, everything was written on paper in a journal out on hikes. And then we would come back in the late afternoon and we would scribe everything onto the computer late into the evening. And so, you know, getting away from the norms. We also have a mountain on our island called Mount Maxwell. And like last week I did a work day up there. I'll hike up to the top of the mountain. I'll sit at the picnic tables at the lookout and I'll stream my data from my phone to my laptop and I'll have three hours of battery life on my laptop to be able to work for a day out in, the, out in nature. And those types of experiences, just that shift in perspective can open us up to so much because we are creatures of habit. We tend to do the same things. We drink the same drinks in the morning. We go for the same walks. We have the same, basically the same routines. 80% of our days are pretty routine and repeatable. And so when we can get outside of the routine and allow ourselves new experiences, new ideas happen. It it's fires new synapses in our mind that all of a sudden we're open to a new idea and a new possibility or a new way of looking at how we've been doing things especially when we begin those journeys with a specific question in mind. So for us, when we were doing the Grady course adventure, we would have three questions that we'd be meditating on for a whole day. Our whole conversation would be around these questions around like, okay, checkpoint number four, we know that we need to help them dive into a niche. We know we need to help them decide on who they're going to serve and what they're going to do. So we would walk for the whole day and we would write about the lessons of what are the really, what are the most important things that need to happen in this checkpoint to set them up for the next one. And so, you know, going on these walkabouts or going on these uh, adventures really supported us to, to just open our minds to what we really needed to discover and what we needed to bring forward. So important so important to get out of the, the routines and to bring ourselves into new space and have new conversations. And so, you know, if any of you have conversation buddies that you can check in with, if you're at a, a point in your life where you're trying to bring something new, you don't know what it is. It's not clear, it, but you know, it's, it's like there you can, anytime a new project comes, I can always feel that there's something new that's on the peripherals and I just don't see it. And oftentimes it's through conversations with other people that those epiphanies come or it's going out on a big hike and, and getting some inspiration and insight. So just such good stuff.
that we can cultivate on our own if you're feeling not fully certain. But, you know, when you're fully certain and you know that you have a path that you're, you're stoked on, then the rest is just taking the action and showing up every day and checking things off the list and doing the research and watching the YouTube tutorials on how to do stuff or the tutorials inside the membership. Like that's, that's the work. Once we have the idea, then what follows is a thousand hours of work. <laughs> that's why it's really important to make sure that whatever idea we're going to execute on is the one we're most excited about because, you know, coming up with the good idea is easy coming up with, you know, the action that's going to follow it all the way to launch. Like, you know, there's, there's two paths, there's building the thing and then there's marketing the thing. And a lot of creators enjoy the process of creating the thing, but the actual execution on marketing and, and whether it's building an audience, partnering with an audience, like all that's, that's the labor intensive stuff for most people, uh, especially creators like ourselves that are less motivated by, uh, analytics and numbers that we're not as um, excited about the game of, you know, conversions and leads and all that sort of stuff. We're, what we most enjoy is taking pride in our craft. Um, and so, yeah, it's it, no matter what, it's a long journey for whatever it is that we're going to create and put out into the world. Hence the university degree analogy. <laughs> <laughs>